Jacob met with his two wives out in the field so they could have a private conversation. He said, I have worked hard for your father, even though he has changed our agreement ten times. God has protected me because every time Laban changed our agreement, God changed how the lambs were being born. But now your father is angry with me. And God has told me to return to the land that he has given my fathers. Both women agreed. They said, our father sold us to you and then spent the money, everything you have, and everything you have gotten from Laban actually already belongs to us and our children. Do as the Lord has told you to do. So, Jacob gathered all that he had and started herding his flocks back towards Canaan. Rachel, before they left, stole her father's family idol. Laban didn't find out that Jacob had left for three days. When he found out, he gathered a group of men and chased after him. It took him seven days to catch up with him. And the night before, God appeared to him and said, Watch out. Don't do anything to Jacob, good or bad. The next day, Laban went to Jacob and said, why have you done this to me? You have left like a, like a thief in the night. You have taken my daughters and grandchildren as if they're prisoners. If you would have just told me, I would have had a grand party and sent you off with a flare. But now you have disgraced me. And if I wanted to, I could destroy you right now. But the God of your father met with me last night and told me not to do anything to you. Now, I can understand you being homesick and wanting to go home, but why would you steal our family idol? Jacob said, I've not, I've not taken your family idol. Search if you want to. If you find it, I will kill the person who took it. He didn't know that Rachel had taken it. Laman searched the tents, started with Jacob's tent and Leah's, the two maidservants. Finally, he came to Rachel's tent. She was sitting on the camel seat where she had hid the idol. When he came in, she said, oh, Father, please forgive me for not standing because I I'm having my monthly period. He searched the entire tent and, of course, couldn't find it. At this point, Jacob was angry. He said, you have chased after me like I was a criminal. You have searched everything. Have you found anything that belongs to you? Bring it out here in front of your men so that we can all see it. No, you have not found anything. I worked for you for 20 years. I have endured the extreme heat of the day and the frost at night. I have gone without sleep so that you could prosper. <laughs> and yet, you, you, make, you have mistreated me in so many different ways. You, with all of these sacrifices that I made for you, you have made me pay for anything that went wrong. Someone stole a sheep. I had to pay for it. If an animal killed a lamb, well, all of a sudden it was my lamb. You have changed our agreement ten times. I would be standing here penniless if God hadn't made things right. 
And now he is protecting me from you. Laban says, everything you have belongs to me. Those are my daughters. Those are my grandsons. Those are my flocks. But what can I do now? Let's make an agreement between you and me. One that cannot be changed. And all these people will be witnesses. So all the men gathered a pile of stones and made a mound. Jacob and Laban agreed that neither man would cross over to the other side of, of that mound. Laban said, these rocks are witnesses of our agreement. You will not mistreat my daughters. You will not marry any other wives. So both men agreed. Jacob then sacrificed to the Lord. And everyone sat down and had a meal. In the morning, Laban got up, kissed his daughters, kissed his grandchildren, and then left and went home.